Hello everyone and welcome back to Era Military Collectibles. This is a surprise video. Um, I managed to get over to England for another show. So we are at Aidan Croft uh, Museum where they have a selection of different buildings and stuff like that. And at this event we are portraying the first SAS in training just prior to going to Normandy in 1944. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some shots, uh, wide shots and angles of um, our display and things that we did at Aidan Croft. This is the M1A1 carbine. This is a paratrooper variant. It's got the skeleton stock, which can be folded in. Uh, the normal version is just a complete wooden stock. These are really popular with the SAS soldiers because it was small, compact and it was light. It also fires a .03 round. It's a pistol round but it's the length of the bullet is what it gives it its power. Range is about 100 metres. Is it about 100 metres isn't it? Yeah, effective range. Two yeah. Seconds, um, it gives a good rate of fire, very accurate weapon as well and arguably you could say it's almost like the SA-80 of the Second World War. Hello there, um, my name's Chris, I am for this weekend I've been portraying a member of the 3rd French SAS. Um, French SAS were attached um, a lot of the time to 1st SAS as interpreters for the English, uh, interpreters, translators, uh, guides, and things like that. Um, they also had good local knowledge of local air operational areas, whereas the first AS English lads wouldn't necessarily have known about local areas and local marquee and resistance um, cells. So we would be attached in that format. And um, today I'm going to talk about the number four T, which is the standard British sniper rifle. Uh, the number four standard rifle came into service in. 41. Um, they replaced the First World War SMLE. Uh, the first number four T's you see come into service in about 42, um, where a, about 2% of each batch from BSA and Enfield were selected and they went through the sniper program, which they uh, tested for accuracy and poundage of the weapon. Uh, once that was completed they were attached with a 32 scope either a mark 1 or a mark 2 later in 45 you see them with mark 3 scopes they're attached with a cheek press a cheek rest and an american leather sling which snipers uh, preferred because you can actually form a proper stance with it um, these were in service with the british army until the uh, l42 came into service which is probably about the late 50s, early 60s. Um, it's calibred in 303, and in my opinion, I'll be one of the best snipers ever created. Hi, I'm Danny Reeves, and this is my 1942 Willys MB, currently rolled as a Jeep of the Special Air Service. As you can see, it's not like your standard American Jeep. It's been highly modified, as learned by lessons with the regiment in North Africa. The biggest impact piece on the front here we have a pair of twin Vickers K machine guns with the big pan mags. A searchlight which originally came off of one of the uh, armoured vehicles. As those of you who do a bit of lamping or rabbiting you'll know that's very good uh, for when you do spotting a target indication. You'll see moving back along the vehicle 
lots and lots of storage. Spare Vickers K Mag stored in an old biscuit tin in the centre, so it could easily be changed. Moving further back, biggest piece here, we have two extra fuel tanks. These gave the Jeeps a range of an excess of nearly, well, nearly 200 miles, so you could actually do some deep penetration range, but also, most importantly, when resupply wasn't possible, you could be self-sustainable for many weeks. Usual crew on the Jeeps was three men, when their Bergens would be lined across the back. And in the back, we have a compo crate for their rations, which will supplement their 24-hour rations, spare parts, extra fuel, and a few liberated things to make life a bit easier when behind the lines. You can see here is a fuel tap. These were originally removed from Bren gun carriers. The idea being that the crew could separate which tank they wanted to use along the run. There's one located here, as you can see. There's also a further one on the floor between the driver and passenger, which would originally link between the two tanks, one to be fitted there shortly. Moving further around, we have other airborne mods, for example, the quick release steering wheel, this locking nut here, and also a cut down bumper at the front. The specific SAS mod was adding knee strengtheners on the front wings so extra loads could be carried. To facilitate the airborne mod, the spare wheel was carried on the, bo on the bonnet, but also extra spare tyres were picked up on the road. This is a civilian example, which they've obviously picked up on the run and uh, fitted for later use. What we have here is a tabletop display of what one man's kit would have been in 1944. How do we know that? Because we've got access to the SAS War Diary. So we've not got everything here, so it's not an exhaustive tabletop display. We've got pretty much everything. So we're going to cherry pick a few items for your enjoyment. So, what do we have here? We have some of the 24 hour ration kit. So we have both the assault and the 24 hour ration there as well. Accompanying that, we have the emergency ration tin. So this would contain uh, a slab of chocolate inside designed to keep the soldier going for uh, a period of up to 24 hours. We also have the uh, Tommy cooker here, so this was issued alongside the 24 hour ration along with the fuel um, tins also. Here we've got an interesting item, this is the sterilising outfit. This doesn't have the uh, contents in it by the look of it, um, but what we would have had in here is two little glass uh, bottles, one with uh, white tablets and one with blue tablets. Now here we've got, I believe a uh, post-war um, version, so we can see uh, we've got the, the blue tablets and the white tablets there, and of course the instructions for use. Some of our items we've got here are also the chocolate and boiled sweets tin. So these were reused, and we can see this to great effect here. So these tins originally came in the uh, compo crates, which would feed 14 men for a day. And these tins were reused by the guys for boot cleaning kits and to put personal effects in but also used more often than not for um, actual personal shaving kits. So you see toothbrushes in there, uh, shaving kit, boot laces and so forth uh, inside there. And they do fit quite snugly inside the uh, front compartment of the Bergen also. We've got some uh, weaponry here. So we have three Mills bombs and also a couple of phosphorus grenades as well. So these are all reproductions, they're of course not live, but they're very Authentic indeed, if you take the top off there, you'll see, uh, just so. Now we did skip over these, but these are unique to sort of uh, special forces of the time. Uh, these are the escape and evasion kits. So this has been uh, faithfully reproduced by Danny Rees. Uh, it does have some omissions in that the Horlicks tablets aren't in there yet. But you'll see things like the, the compass in there, uh, fishing wire, chewing gum and some of the other items such as matches and fishing hooks, uh, just to name a few. We've also got uh, a small um, escape kit here, which was issued in various um, different climates to uh, many of the guys who were uh, on special operations at the time. We'll also just mention very briefly, we've got the, uh, the helmet steel airborne troops. Now, it's actually noted in the war diary that these we used by the guys, they'd jump wearing them, uh, but when they landed they would get rid of them. Uh, the stories of them being buried or just completely discarded, 
and uh, the guys almost more often than not used their wore their berets on their head instead. A couple of other items we've got: American musette bags. You'll see uh, many of the guys from the SAS, amongst other special forces at the time, using uh, equipment and weaponry from other uh, nations. Uh, the musette bag was extremely popular with the SAS at the time, and again, this is noted in the kit list of the war diary. So there we go, brief little snapshot of just some of the kit uh, carried and used by the SAS in 1944.